السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام Welcome to Mind Heist episode 55. What's the, you know, in bingo, uh, this is pretty old school, I, I, and it's even too old school for me. Bingo. Uh, you know, in pensioner. bingo, they got all these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, names, like 22 is the uh, two rubber ducks or something. 22, go to the loo. It's something like that, you know, these things. So what's 55? I don't know what I'm asking you. 55, look alive. <laughs> Okay, we'll just make it up then. I don't okay. know. <laughs> uh, welcome, Mr. Akhi Tweet, to the podcast after just one week of absence. Not a big problem, inshallah. Um, I'm excited, man, to get back into this. We're, we're recording on Monday, and inshallah, we'll put this out on Monday. Maybe maybe Tuesday morning. You're recording Sunday. Is it Monday for you? Is that, are you on the other side of the world? Oh, it is Monday. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were messing about. Bro, I felt like it was Sunday. Oh, my God. Okay, then. I'll try and put it out later. <laughs> um, yeah, bro. Um, before we get into the main topic, I wanted to bring this up because, uh, you know, I'm not really usually that into the the local trends, the, the ongoing trends, the current affairs, yeah? But I have heard of this new uh, Netflix show called Messiah. Did you hear about it? <laughs> yeah, I was, talking to, I was talking to some brothers about this the other night. Um, you know the worst thing your... about it. Go on. Is is the trailer like looks so sick and it's like <laughs> the exact type of thing I would watch because you know uh, when I do watch films I noticed yeah I've noticed the trend like the only time I watch films on the plane okay and I always end up watching these end of times like uh, apocalyptic Armageddon kind of things like end of the world zombies like whatever it is yeah I always yeah. end up watching those so I like them yeah. So then um, I heard of this Messiah thing. So I was like, okay, let me see what's about. And it's like the exact thing I would watch. <laughs> <laughs> like regardless of it being about whatever, the gel or whatever, it, it's just that type of thing. I found it interesting. What phenomenon I realized is that people were losing their minds, right? Mm. Oh, it was like it was trending on Twitter. I think it was the number one trending thing on Twitter. Okay. Uh, the, the, the term de gel was trending. Wow. Uh, Speaking of Dejel, I've realised I've been pronouncing it wrong all this all this time. It's Dejel, isn't it? Mm, I believe it's Shenda, yeah. Yeah, and I was I was with some brothers the other day. I'm like, what are you saying? Why are you saying it like that? Mm. I was like, oh, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Anyway, Wait, uh, how do you I digress. Say it? I was saying Dejel. De oh, but that's that's normal, bro. That's the North African way of saying regime. Oh, that, that's what I thought. Because I was saying to them, I bet it's something to do with my colloquial accent. Yeah, yeah. But, um, even anyway. in North Africans, they say "jim." Even in the Quran, they, it's only a slight um, thing, but it's yeah. like uh, it's it should be "j," and we say "j." Ah, oh, that explains everything. Because I was really <laughs> struggling after that mm. to sort of correct myself. Mm. But it anyway, it's shed though. But yeah. So. Um, yeah, it was trending on Twitter, the term Dejel, mm. but it wasn't even, the, the actual term in Arabic wasn't mentioned anywhere on that yeah. trailer. Or yes. It was all, you know, what was it called, uh, Messiah or Antichrist yes. or whatever. Yeah. And people were losing their minds thinking, oh, look, they're turning our uh, hadith into a movie, blah, blah, blah. It really is the end times, all this stuff. Yeah. Not realizing that, you know, the other two Abrahamic faiths, well, mainly Christianity, mm. Mm. they have a concept of the Antichrist and they're yeah. borrowing a lot of this from that anyway. Yeah. Mm. Um, so there's no need to freak out. Like, mm. it's they're like freaking out as if they're trying to d undermine what we believe in. Um, or And this is a thing, like, nothing's... A, it's a bit of a phenomenon with, with modern-day Muslims that nothing's ever sort of important until the non-muslims pick up on it first mm. like they'll pick up on certain aspects and we like lose our minds mm. um but anyway like whether people watch it or not mm. i don't know what the outcome is going to be i don't know what sort of story they're going to tell mm. and it's with a lot of media like it will warp your understanding of certain things if you're not familiar with yes, the way it the, should be the islamic um, uh, yeah the, there's the, also like the the whole conspiracy like the whole dajel topic mm. uh setting aside what we ha we have as forms of text and evidences for the entire sort of situation mm -hmm. it's it's wrapped up in modern day conspiracies and illuminati and you know what i mean people sort of pulling at threads to try and attach um attach you know dejel as a system or as an individual to yeah. modern day groups or modern day movements or whatever yeah. 
Um, and whether that is, yeah, and, and I think, ju- you know, judging from my own past and my own obsession with that sort of stuff, I realised that it was serving me no benefit. Like, I wasn't mm. benefiting anything. The amount of times you, you can spend... Uh, studying the modern day phenomena of w- what could be linked to Dejel or the movement of Dejel or whoever's preparing for Dejel to arrive mm. could be spent um, increasing your knowledge so that you can actually fend off the Dejel if you was to arrive during your lifetime or yeah. to pass on that knowledge to your kids who may be the ones to face him or face his people you know what I mean Yes. Um, so yeah the, I digress but it was just it was just interesting to see people going crazy and losing their minds. Yeah, <laughs> I think how... you know Muslims are so. Unfortunately, I mean, this always comes when you are on the back foot, if you like. Uh, yeah, definitely. Being defensive, yeah. basically. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, anyone else. Like, let's say you are on on top, right? Let's say you're whatever you're American, white American, whatever, right? You're not going to get defensive about someone taking a story linked to you and then yeah. turn it into a film or you'd be like you might even celebrate it you'd be like yeah like we are sick like of course people want to tell our stories you know yeah yeah, um, yeah so it's interesting how the same event can happen but you react differently based on your um your kind of position in the pecking order you know uh, that's one way i think people react is being so defensive and then the other way people react is like um hmm Kind of like just being uh, maybe not the other way, but being against it for other reasons. So it's not like, oh, you're not allowed to tell our story. It's like uh, you're not allowed to tell the story of the gel, even if it's from a Christian point of view. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's all actually defensive. Actually, there's also the like this. There's also like this notion of like cultural appropriation and people yes, getting outraged that, that's what when I was trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah, people get outraged when like. I don't know, things are borrowed from our narrative. Yeah. And, and I was like, I don't, I don't know, maybe some people care more than others. But I remember like little things like when Aladdin, for example, the movie was yeah. was made recently and people were getting outraged because I think one of the actors in there wasn't Arab or something like that. Mm. People were like, oh, this is cultural pro Like, who cares? Honestly, mm. we, take, we put so much care into... And so much attention into these modern day mm. things that don't benefit our ummah mm. whatsoever. Well, I um, think you could argue the other way, though. You could say, I mean, I do think, like we know, I know you would agree with this as well, that culture and media is, is actually very powerful. And yeah. it's potentially yeah. more powerful than, than other things, right? Like more hard power because, for example, of how it could spread around the whole world. It can influence mm. world views and all of this stuff, right? Yeah. I think... Obviously, though, what you're saying is true in the sense where it's like it, people take it too far when it's like it's it's one thing being against people grabbing your stories and telling them in the wrong way, for example. Yeah, that's yeah. something to to be uh, you know worried about and, and maybe take action against because it's now becoming a lie. Like you're now you're, you're changing the whole narrative and the story. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's an, the, that's maybe a, a noble way of, of reacting. The, the negative way of reacting is when it's like you just don't like it because you're sensitive because you're, defen- you're, you're defensive because you feel inferior that's yeah. when it's like no you're just being too sensitive because you're weak like let's be real um, uh, but it's, it's, it's actually a very very complicated topic I think yeah, it's difficult uh, because no matter how much you sh- scream and shout about it, mm. very little changes. But then again, yeah. one could argue that with enough voices and enough mm. movement, then things mm. get heard. It's, like for example, look at the—I mm. know it's not not the same—but mm. if you look at like the Uyghur crisis in China, yes. like we wouldn't have known anything about that if people weren't talking about it. On yeah, yeah, media, yeah. You know? It's true. It's always a balance between shouting out loud about something and the whole spreading awareness thing, and yeah. then turning awareness into an action almost like we talked about this before it's like you feel like you've done something just because you've spoken about it yeah. so obviously awareness needs to be made but then it's like you know do something beyond that isn't it but mm. um you know i remember i was told about a situation where a i think she's like american actress i think this might be something to do with um that panther movie black panther was it uh, oh yeah yeah so I think like one of the actresses or something in that film, she's American, right? But she's originally maybe from Nigeria, okay? Okay. And she wanted to make a movie. She wanted to produce a movie which is based on a Nigerian 
uh, Nigerian uh, story, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they didn't want her to do, like, I think Nigerians didn't want her to do because, like, oh, you're American, like, you're not really Nigerian, and you're going to, like, take this narrative and you're going to twist it or this or that, right? Mm. So they were saying that, but then on the other side, it's like, well, she might... Uh, she might uh, bring a lot of attention to Nigerian cinema. She might bring investment. She might, you know, your story's getting out to the world yeah. um, on the flip side. So it's like, that's, the, that's another instance of this happening. Um, but I kind of, I guess I feel like the way to deal with this is similar to like Sunnah Bida, okay? You can, if, if you want, you could spend the rest of your life refuting different Bidas because there's that many, right? Yeah. But what would be more powerful is to teach people the principles of the sunnah and how you identify something as being the sunnah and focus on what the, the positive things to do rather than just talk about the negative things. Because when you teach negative things, you don't teach people what to do about it. You just say yeah. avoid that, but you don't tell them what to do. And I think there was a statement of Imam Malik around that, like my way, some, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm paraphrasing, uh, my way of countering the bid'ah is to teach the sunnah. You know, mm. that's kind of my philosophy in in general. In general, there's so much, there's so much of the deen that can be implemented um, that you'll you'll just be learning things all the time. Like mm -hmm. there's so many things that you'll you'll be doing for years mm -hmm. and thinking that you you've pretty much got it down. Like you know what you're doing in terms. Like for example, something as simple as praying. Right? Mm. You, you think, oh, I do this every day, five times a day at least. Mm. I know what I'm doing when it comes to it. And then you mm. just learn something like years later, like, oh, uh, yeah. I didn't realize I should, I, not, not I should be doing that or I could do that or that's it. Do you understand? Like, mm. this is, this is, it's just an endless ocean. I was playing this game with, um, I say game, I basically challenged Faisal Chowdhury or Freshly mm. Grounded when I met him. Mm. I said, the sun is so amazing that you could probably point at anything, of any part of your body, more or less, mm. give or take, and there'll probably be a sun attached to it. Okay. Um, it could be anything. It could be mm. like, you know, he said something like toes. I was like, okay, well, you clip your finger, you clip your toenails on you know, hey. a certain day of the week or from this direction, <laughs> or you, you, when you're washing your feet for wudu, then you put your little finger between your toes. And mm. he said, okay, uh, tongue. Uh, well, you, you know, control your speech. And the Prophet said that if you guard, you know, your tongue, then, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot yeah. of things, basically. Mm. Um, but it, that's just a phenomenal example. Like, if you really do think about it, there's a lot. The only thing I couldn't think about was elbow, but I'm sure there is something there for elbows. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? It's in the Quran that, you know, about wudu, like... Uh, Oh, you wash up to your elbows. Yeah, or so had to you know, ilal marafiq, you yeah. know? What else did he say? He said shoulders. The only thing I could think about was like the Prophet Sallallahu used to have um, the, the seal of the prophets in between the shoulder blades. Mm. Something along those lines. Mm, there anyway, could be something about covering the shoulders in Salah as well. Could be. I'm not could sure be if there's a lot, a lot is best. But it could be. Yeah, yeah. But you uh, see what I mean? Like it's all encompassing. Mm. Mm. Okay, bro. So obviously I wanted to talk about like uh, on on the topic of the current topic in the UK at least, and I mean there are there, are, yeah, I mean, there's actually broader discussion of uh, elections uh, in the world, right? Because I think in the US there is going to be elections next year. Um, there is in the UK in December, right? I think uh, elections. Um, yeah. Right now there's uh, <laughs> there's elections in Algeria supposed to be coming up, but uh, crazy man. But what's going on in Algeria is very interesting. Like. Uh, basically, the people are boycotting the election. Okay. Um, for the, uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, it seems like most people are going to. Although, yeah, in the past, I think on average, like fifteen percent of people voted, right? But now it's going to be at least people are trying to encourage each other and all of this for the turnout to be zero percent. So we'll see really uh, <laughs> what happens there. So anyway, there's a lot of elections going on. Obviously, maybe we could focus a bit more on the UK, like you're living there. Um, I, I guess I'm more, maybe a bit more aware of the UK than US yeah. or Algeria. Um, so, so yeah, man, I so this is this whole, the way to frame, I think, the discussion on elections is rather than uh, just focusing, because before you zoom in onto political change or influence or whatever and then therefore elections and you're zooming in too much i think you, and therefore you're zooming into the the leaf when before you should take a look at the forest first right so yeah. i see this as a part 
of change in general, you know, yep. trying to create change. Um, and there's so many w ways of doing that, right? There is the social level, trying to change the, the social, meaning family relationships, this kind of is, dam dynamics between spouses, between kids and parents. Um, then there is the, the e economics, you know, there is the, the power of having um, certain industries um, that you kind of could have some kind of sway over. There is the influence of e the industry over politics. There is one-to-one -one relationships, dawa. There is, you know, so many things, right? There's business, obviously, as an influence. So po politics is only one side of, of that kind of thing, equation. Yeah. But... Um, I think, you know, looking at some stuff, you know, that I, I'm seeing online regarding this election in the UK, it's made me a bit more kind of positive about this idea of at least trying to make influence through politics. Um, mm. what, what are your thoughts? Um, for me, it's always been, I mean, we'll probably differ on this topic because, but that's fine. But for me, it's always been like a very controversial area in mm -hmm. terms of voting. And mm. um, I feel like, I can see both sides of the argument. What are the so, two sides? So or are there more than two sides? There's one side. There's one side that I know. Anyway, these are the two sides that are probably the loudest that I know yeah. of, or at least I'm aware of. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's a side that that believes that I think they both agree that democracy, in its, you know, in its rawest form, isn't part of the the Deen or the Sunnah, right? You know, in terms of um, what we have today. Mm. I think they both agree that, as mm. far as I'm aware. But I think mm. there's a, there's one side that 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 has come to not 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 blind opinion. They've come through you know shuyukh that support this. Mm. Um, that through it because of this is where we this is this is the life. These are the cards we sort of dealt with at the moment. This is the only way yes. that leadership and change happens. Um, that through it we try and seek either the lesser of two evils or what's better for the Muslims as a whole. Mm -hmm. To reduce the harm upon the Muslims, mm. um, and then there's there was also the side that that states, well, considering it isn't part of um, our deen, and and there is they make the argument that it could it could be classed as ruling by other than what Allah has legislated, or something along mm. those lines. I'm really butchering this argument, by the way. Mm. It should be some it should be you know something that you look into yourself for mm. the accurate sort of um, argument, mm. but. But because of that, it should be best be avoided. Um, and like, for example, last time round, I voted because I was leaning more to the the first opinion, right? Oh, I really? Okay. I, yeah, I don't think I've ever said oh, that. Oh, this, this is getting juicy now. Okay. Yeah, last time round, I did. Well, you voted um, more more times than I have then. I've only voted once. <laughs> yeah, well, that's more once. than me. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I don't know. But I, I, I just thought, I, I, didn't, I didn't actually give it much thought. Okay. I because I never done I'd never done it before. Mm -hmm. I'd never voted before that. When was this? Was this four years ago or something? It must have been. I don't know. The last time this had happened, it feels mm. like it was four years ago. Mm. Um, I remember it, a lot of it was through. I think like my sister was thinking of going to uni, and and there was a lot of manifestos. That, well, there was a you know a few manifestos that were talking about uni fees and all this other stuff. And my okay. mum was really interested in in you know making the situation. For my sisters easier like you know shoot, avoiding student loans and all that yes. all that sort of stuff so i remember doing it then but then i was i remember thinking like oh i've never really done that before i didn't really look into it before i mm. did it and i wasn't too sure that i'd done the right thing yeah i know like yes one could argue that i did the right thing in terms of trying to change things for the muslims the better for the better yeah but in an islamic level i didn't really i wasn't confident in what i'd done right you know? mm. and now this time around in all honesty i haven't had time to think about you know what's actually being i mean i see it every now and again wherever i go online and stuff the arguments mm. and the hysteria and mm. the, the scandals and all of that but i don't think i mean i, I don't think i'm going to be part of it whatsoever because okay my argument at the moment as it stands and i haven't sat or spoken to anyone about this but my argument as it stands and people will get really angry about this and they might send some emails <laughs> but it's like I don't feel like I am obligated to vote like I and this expands further on like I think we can there's plenty to do that is non-controversial 
in terms mm. of re- religiously that we can do to try and change our situations and change situations of those around us yeah i think because voting is so con- like it's so dicey whether it's ha- permissible or not mm. i feel like i'm safer not voting and then doing what i physically can myself mm. um, to change the situation mm. around me as opposed to voting risking my risking a big what one could argue is a big sort of deal in our yeah. religion to sort yeah. of hand over that authority to someone yeah. who isn't a muslim and through a system that isn't islamic mm. and then expect them to to implement that change when mm. really one would argue that it's just the lesser of two evils Mm-hmm. Because although there are certain things in wh- whoever's manifesto that appeal to you and may appeal to Muslims, there's mm-hmm. also going to be a whole side to that coin that doesn't. And yeah. generally, it's it, it kind of comes down to a battle between the left wing and the right wing. Mm-hmm. And we've spoken about these before. Like, yeah, there are loads of things that right wing politics is completely against Islam in. in. But mm-hmm. then actually, there's a lot of things that are quite... I wouldn't say aligned, maybe sometimes aligned, but sometimes more, you know, appealing for a Muslim to live in, like traditional mm. societal values or traditional mm. families or things mm. like that. Do you know what I mean? Does that does that right wing alignment um, apply in the UK? Because I agree with you in the US, that seems to be the case. But is it the case in the UK? I don't know. I haven't. I wouldn't mm. know. I wouldn't mm. know. I'm, I'm saying that in terms of like a general sort of. Yeah, um, the because this, this could be applied worldwide, you know. Yeah, like yeah. for example, if you were to say right wing America, mm. um, maybe that's an easier example to see because yeah, you you may see more, like we said, more traditional, um, yeah, family structures, family mm. like those are mm. the things that get promoted more. Yes, um, yes, and, and I think obviously, I, faith I, I don't think we've seen. I mean, we are seeing it, but I don't think we've seen like true, uh, deep left wing politics flourish. Because mm. I think if we did, yeah. you know, to a bigger... We're seeing bits of it and parts of it, for sure. But I think if we saw more, we're, then we'd start panicking again. Yeah, start, agreed, yeah. That's and true. then we'd start voting for the opposite. And yeah, we'd just be yeah. bouncing left and right all mm. the time. So are you saying then that out of all these different ways we could try and implement change in the place we live, you're kind of going to just put the politi- political side, uh, the political part to the side for now? I think... Uh, yeah, I, I, for me, I, because I'm not. This is the thing. This is my argument. Mm. I believe that. I don't know. I don't know if I. Uh, it's difficult speaking about this because it's a, it's an area where if someone hasn't preceded you in making a statement, then it's too dangerous for you to even talk about it. Like if there isn't a scholar or someone of knowledge that can precede you, mm. then I'm just a layman talking nonsense, and yeah. someone should really take. What but what I'm what are you thinking? Though? Because I'm, your opinion, my opinion, that nobody is saying by, that is backed I'll tell by. You, I'll tell you what. This is Allah this is what some, a brother told me this recently. I can't remember who it was, mm. um, or where I heard it, or and it was quite poignant to me it mm. was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges everyone based on the circumstances that they're in right yeah um, and if I was to get judged as uh, as someone who isn't involved in politics mm. then I would get judged based on on that as a layman who actually me throwing something into a hat isn't really big boy change or I'm mean, not in a position where change can be made um you know quite active it's almost like playing a lottery really isn't it like you're just chucking your vote in and hoping for the best and mm. actually you're chucking in you could argue you're chucking in part of your deen with that what one could argue though is that maybe Allah will look at the situation of a Muslim politician a bit differently right or someone who is put in a position mm. that there is a big amount of change position, one, position of more authority than the average exactly. person and yeah. those are the people that maybe you know, uh, uh, but what, what, once again, one could argue: Well, it takes someone to make that choice to get more involved into politics, yeah, does, become yeah, an MP, and become yeah. this and that before it's those true. things happen. For mm. example, hypothetically speaking, like you know, the mayor of London is Muslim, yeah. right? So maybe one could say, "Oh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will, will judge his situation differently to my situation." Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, I don't, I'm not making a character judgment on his uh, his religiosity at all. Mm-hmm. But let's yeah. hypothetically, for the sake of argument, and this is purely for the sake of argument, let's say he wasn't a practicing Muslim, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say hypothetically he wasn't a practicing Muslim. But he's been put in that position mm-hmm. of, you know, you're the mayor of London. Whether he worked to it or he just found himself in it through fate. Um, and then one day he wakes up and he wants to start being really serious about his religion. Yes. Right? Does he then throw away that position of power mm. that he has 
mm. you know, that power and influence mm. to be a practicing Muslim? Or does he hold on to that position of power mm-hmm. and practice his faith and try and implement policies and whatever that are more beneficial for the Muslims because of it? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. And this I mean, is this is something I think... I, I, I find it hard to believe this is a, a modern phenomenon, right? Yeah. And I think... I think this is one of the most difficult parts of life when there is no direct hadith about it. There is no Quran ayah about it, right? It's it's simply taking principles from the Quran and Sunnah and taking the context you're in yeah. and making a judgment call, yeah. right? And just trying to be sincere and asking Allah for guidance. But in the end, it's a judgment call. Yeah. And, and that's very difficult, isn't it? Yeah. And and this is it, like, and this is why, when, when uh, people may say that I'm selfish, or may say, you know, anyone who who chooses not to engage in this sort of, I'm not saying like don't engage in politics. I'm mm. saying there's certain sort of aspects, like, for example, like the voting procedure. Okay. Right? But one would say, well, you're being selfish. You're not thinking about anyone else, right? Mm. In terms of the Muslim Ummah, mm. you're also. What sort of change are you going to enact if you don't engage with the system that this country runs by? Mm, that right? you've chosen to live in. That yeah. you've chosen to live in. And mm. I say chosen, like people say chosen. I didn't choose to be born here and have this citizenship. Yeah. You know, people could say, well, leave then. I was like, well, mm. everybody's situation isn't that simple. Of course. Um, yeah. And I think it's that's what we start watering down things very black and white. Like, you should vote or you should not. And if you don't, then this mm. is why. Mm. Like, I, I've, I've learned to realize, especially now, like, things are way more nuanced than I'd ever, I could have ever imagined. I was yeah. saying to my wife the other day, I said, like, I used to think so black and white and I used to think so. I used to think that everybody thought the same. And if they didn't think the, if they didn't, if they used to think differently to what I believed was the truth, then they're doing it on purpose. They're like <laughs> yeah. being wrong on purpose. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that's funny. I used to think that. Like, I used to be convinced that people thought exactly like I did. And if they made the wrong decision, they were doing it on purpose. Mm. And there wasn't, like, that many outside. And that just shows how immature I was. Mm. They're just, like, shunning the truth. They're like, I yeah, don't want to know shun- the truth. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to know yeah. the truth. Like, yeah. I'd rather choose my desires. Yeah. Yeah. When actually, obviously, some so people many, do that, but some people many. do. Yeah. Some people do, but actually, yeah. I've learned that there's a lot more nuance to people's circumstances. Yes, yes, there's a lot more. People haven't got the freedom of choice that everybody mm. else. That and that's why, else Alhamdulillah, made. we know that. Yani, Allah is, is just, and mm. we. That's why, Alhamdulillah, you know, we judge by our circumstances and every thought that goes through our mind Allah knows you know and that's why that's that's a big relief isn't it that's what satisfies me in my decision Mm. Um, and and I'm sure the same thing will satisfy someone who makes a a different decision yeah 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 you know but what satisfies me in my decision is that you know I could say to myself Muhammad you don't you don't really follow politics deeply you know Mm. you're not engaged like that Mm. for you to start voting Mm. just because everybody else is telling you to Mm. isn't really sincere enough okay do you truly believe that the person like this is it isn't it do you truly believe that things are going to be better mm. if you vote for xyz person and they were to win mm. do you truly believe would you risk would you put your the question of you know whether it's permissible or not on the line to yeah. make that choice mm. do you understand mm. um and i can't i can't mm. i just can't find it in myself to make that argument yeah. i can't find it in myself to do something that isn't necessarily obligated mm. upon me to do mm. like if I was to vote and it was it was impermissible, mm-hmm. then you know on Yom Al Qiyamah, if I'm mm. questioned about it, mm. wouldn't have the safer option been? Because if I don't vote, I have got. Mm. I'm pretty certain if I don't vote, mm. Allah's not going to hold me accountable for that. Especially if I'm trying to do things for for the for the human race to better the human, you know, to better the Ummah, to better the situation, to live my life according mm. to the song that Doing other to things, do those yeah. things. Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. I don't believe, I strongly don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge me for not voting mm. in a mm. in a democratic mm. election, mm. you know? Yeah. But but it's the risk of doing so and then have, having to be questioned. Mm. And the bottom line is, 
none of us none of us want to be questioned about a single thing mm. all of us want to be able to go into Jannah with no with no questioning whatsoever like that's mm. the dream and okay. there's only a certain amount of people that will be admitted into to Jannah like that yeah yeah I don't want to be able, I don't mm. want to be in any position where I have to qu- be questioned about anything I've done because mm. just the thought is terrifying mm-hmm. and and if anybody's ever been into court or been to a courtroom it's mm. a small 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 minuscule taste of that sort of that sort of um Mm, you know, you could have done that. like you know when I went to court, I'd done nothing wrong. By the way, like I was, I was going to court as a quote unquote like a victim, right? Where okay. I was assaulted, um, and I say assaulted, it wasn't. It's just, it's just you know when people put their hands on you in the mm. UK, it's cast as like an assault. Mm. <laughs> but you're, you're just like a that. big softy, aren't you, bro? Yeah, but the thing is, someone else <laughs> witnessed it, right? Someone else okay. witnessed it. Yeah. Now I gave a statement. I yeah. I went up to the judge. Uh, to the magistrate, sorry, and I said, you know, this is what happened, blah blah blah, and he pushed me uh, with his right arm, hmm. right, and then s- sweet, that was me done, kind of thing. I was like, hmm. okay, blessed. Then the other the other person came in who witnessed it, and he said, yes, yes, I saw him. He pushed him with two arms like this, pushing hmm. both his arms forward, and I was like, oh my god, they're gonna think I'm lying because he yeah. said two, two arms, and I said one arm. It's yeah. the end of the world. Like I was freaking out because I thought, yeah. oh my god, what if they think I'm lying? Blah blah. blah. Now, you know, obviously, magistrate was like, yeah, fine. Okay, they found the, the guy guilty, okay. right? But that was something so tiny. It was something mm. minuscule. And I was yeah. I was telling the truth, you know, from what mm. I believed, from what I, you know. I wasn't mm. adding or taking away anything. I said what had happened. Mm. But I was still freaking out, despite the fact that it's, a, you know, I'm surrounded with human beings here. It's just a, it's a, yeah. it's a tiny, tiny case. It's nothing major. So imagine that applied to your dunya or, you know, applied to the judgment of your dunya and whether you're going to Jannah or Jahannam. Like, yeah, just the questioning, a, bro, is that's insane. That's a big point. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, like, and something I've been thinking about a lot lately is if I can't find a decent excuse now, then what? What? What's my? You know, what am I mm. going to say then? The, mm, that's you know? a good way of thinking about it. Yeah, like, like preparing your excuses now. There, this is yeah. it and for this but this particular thing yeah it's the same with anything like there's there's obviously um contingencies in place for extreme circumstances you know like for example riba for example a lot of the ulama that drop fatwa about riba obviously being haram will say like you if you have to take a loan out like it's a life or death situation or you're you're forced to or it, you know things like this yes then there's a there's a rukhsa for that sort of thing yeah but so I, I I judge even emergency situations like that. Like I look at there have been times where I've had emergency situations where I've had to make decisions that I wouldn't normally make without them, you know. And I, I think, oh my god, Yom Al Qiyam, I'm going to be asked about this. Was this really a, an emergency? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can I really justify what I've just done? Yeah. And it's things like this, bro. And mm. I don't think people. I think, and this might be a controversial thing to say, but I think. We are thinking way too dunya focused. We're thinking the dunya is our everything when we mm. make decisions like this mm. about, oh, we need to better our dunya and we're going to do it through voting for this and that and, mm. or, or bending the rules of Islam a little bit mm. here and there or whatever. But it's just dunya. Mm. It is just dunya. So you're bending your akhira mm. for a little bit of, for a slice of mm. the dunya pie. Mm. And I know that's a controversial thing to say. And I'm not saying that people need to take what I've just said as what should mm, be done the only way I'm, yeah i'm just saying that this is how mm. i think mm. yeah and yeah. this is why i hesitate mm. and this you is know? this is a bit of a meta moment now because uh you know you know in, re- in reference to the last episode i think yeah. it's very very good that okay i'm just stepping back now and just commenting on what you're saying right so you've been Go speaking you've been speaking about you know your stance and what you think is right and all of that yeah and what you've been saying is a few things very important that allows dialogue to happen between yep. people that disagree. So yep. firstly, you acknowledge that there are multiple opinions and yep. you've kind of validated them, right? Yep. Uh, it, it, and there are, there are multiple opinions from real scholars, yeah? So that's, yep. that's good. You've, you've acknowledged there are multiple opinions. So that's the first thing that stops people just bashing heads nonstop without any understanding. The second thing is you're saying that you're being clear, Yanni, that you, you're not really comfortable with one of those two two opinions. The third is you are saying that I see this from my conclusion is I'm more comfortable with this and I'm going to do this. 
but you're like I can also understand how other people would go the other way yeah, yeah. so all these things put together I think they come to produce beneficial productive discussion uh, and yeah. even disagreement and even debate and even argument um, but it's like positive and it's like you know what I mean whereas yeah. imagine you came and you said look um, I don't I don't believe really in voting I don't think it's useful I don't think it's worth the risk and this and that and anyway there's no other scholars real scholars that have an opinion that you can vote yeah you get it that would yeah. just shut down the whole conversation and I mean it's just not true you know and that's yeah. why it it's very difficult to discuss nearly anything with people who only think there are like 10 scholars in the whole world, you know, because yeah. you can't get beyond the thing. It's like, it's the same reason you can't really have these kind of discussions with Shia because they're like, oh, Sahih Bukhari? Oh no, that's like narrated by Abu Huraira, a lot of those hadith and so, yeah, like, yeah, so you're so not even, it. like you're not even on the same wavelength Spectrum. whatsoever. Like yeah. they're on like FM and you're on AM, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just, that's like, it's, it's some good points to take from there. Um, now, I, I, me personally, I think I thought about this topic, you know, maybe it was four years ago. Maybe there was, I think I was in the UK and there was elections or maybe there were local elections even. And I was yeah. kind of thinking about this and I think there was some discussion online about it. And um, I remember seeing much more two-sidedness to it then. But now maybe it's because just what I'm exposed to it seems like the overwhelming majority of people are like, yeah, why would voting be haram kind of thing, right? Right. Um, but anyway, reg regardless of that, um, I have actually have got come to a point where I can't even, I can't even remember why it would be haram to vote. <laughs> yeah. So um, can you remember? Like, um, cause I, I'm because just, I'm actually just lost now. Because I haven't looked into the arguments since last time. Hmm. Like I've seen thumbnails of videos, okay. If you know what I mean, um, and that's all I've mm. sort of yeah. seen, and yeah. and that that's enough to let mm. me know, like, okay, there's two different. Sides. There are some different opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I and, think, uh, you know, um, I think you know what's interesting. Yeah, is breaking down democracy because mm. democracy is actually multi. There's multiple elements to democracy, and we could say, if we're being honest, we could say some of it. Uh, directly opposes yani, what Allah and his messenger brought yeah. and some of it is literally mubah right and uh, uh, you know I'm not I'm, I'm trying to always only pull from what I've heard like real scholars say right but we're mm. just as an academic exercise whether you're discussing permissibility or not just as an academic exercise everybody will know the, there's different elements to democracy there is law making there is mm. voting there is parliament that or even like civil rights, civil liberties or whatever it is, freedom of speech. These are all elements of democracy. Yeah. Mm. And you could say, for example, um, giving uh, people the ability to legislate regardless of what Allah and his messenger have, have revealed. Yani, you could say this is clear shirk. Mm. Yeah. Um, you could say that. I'm sure maybe most people or all people would agree with that part. Right. So that's one element where we could say, yes. Uh, that's that's shirk, right? Because only Allah has the has the right to legislate in the areas that Allah has legislated. As for the areas Allah has not legislated, like the traffic rules, yeah, then yeah. that's that's for human judgment, right? Um, but now there's the other other element of elections, right? So it's it's just a bit tr puzzling for me, a bit tricky for me to understand how elections themselves are shirk, right? Or mm. or is anything wrong with them? Because it's like if I've, if we come together, you know, there's there's twenty people in a football team, and we vote on the captain. Is that now haram, mm. or does it only become haram because we're picking a politician? What what makes picking a politician different mm. to picking uh, picking a, a captain of a football team? Mm. I think this is why, like these, that, so this question in particular would have to be taken back to someone of knowledge, someone mm. maybe from both sides. Of the, mm. of the argument well i as a as a humble layman um i think we can't both of us can't deny that there's a huge scholars that have said that it's impermissible um and although uh, although yeah one would argue just taking their word for it that's sort of what we do as laymen when it comes to these sort of topics mm. because we like i said we can see both sides of the argument like i could see why someone would say we need to actually try and engage and implement change right? yeah 
Yeah. It's the same with like protests and, and things like that. Yeah, there are, there's a side to not protesting, there's a side to protesting. Mm. Um, but I've noticed that it's more nuanced than that. First, you need to define what a protest is. Yes. You know? This is when re- this is when you actually need people with their heads screwed on. Who mm. Everybody knows when you write an essay or... Uh, yeah, an essay. You define your terms. Yep. Yeah. Or when you have a legal document, what what's what's special about legal documents or contracts is that they are binding, yeah. right? And so you have to be very careful with every word, right? That's why they start yeah. the document by defining the terms. And this is a way to have a, a proper discussion, rather than one guy saying democracy, he means elections. The other guy saying, oh no, democracy, I meant. Uh, legislating in the place of Allah mm. you know it's like two different yeah. things yeah. so you're right there's, there's, yeah, there's, mate, a lot, there's a lot yeah. to it I mean there's also the angle that mm. you know we could go to uh, I wouldn't say an extreme but like mm. a far far on one side there's the mm. argument like well you're not even you're a Muslim in a non-Muslim country mm. um, why are you like why are you even there? Like, if you, yes, do you understand that, what yeah. I mean? That's what um, I was gonna bring up, bro. Because I was, I was looking into this topic because I got, I was, I was reading a lot of stuff from Islam Twenty One C about the the topic of elections. Right, they're really, really pushing for people to register, like Muslims to register and get uh-huh. involved. Right, and honestly, the arguments are very, very convincing. What they're bringing, okay, and um. And I started thinking, okay, like, what is the other side of it and stuff like that. And, yeah. and uh, anyway, I looked at, I was like, okay, what, what, what does Mufti say about this? Because Mufti is often the most balanced guy I can ever, you know, think of when I'm thinking about these things, right? Uh-huh. So what does so Mufti um, in this video? He was someone asked him actually about joining the U.S. Army, right? Okay, and I said, what's yeah, the yeah, ruling yeah. on that? Yeah, he's like, well, I think the ruling on joining the U.S. Army is the same as the ruling on. Uh, paying taxes and voting yeah. and yeah. you know so I thought it was a very interesting thing it's like you're in the system and this is this is what kind of really stuck the point home for me is that he's yeah. like um, you're gonna live in this country yeah you don't have plans to leave the country you're going to get a job in the country you're going to make money from the country you're going to walk through the streets with so much haram in sight you're going to walk past betting shops you're going to you're going to pay your taxes you're going to um do all this stuff right you're yeah. going to obey all the laws that are there but then when it comes to trying to have a positive influence on that system that you're living in and you're not about to leave oh no now now it's too much mm. so that made a lot of sense to me it's like mm. you you're here since you're here Surely you can't just sit down and, and say, look, I am not going to have any positive influence on this society at the political mm. level whatsoever. Surely that doesn't make sense. And that, that mm. really uh, that really convinced me, to be honest. Mm. I, my angle of it is, mm. well, I don't know. My, my perspective is like we, I'm fully open to being sort of argued against, by the way. Like that's one thing I want to say. But my point of view is like, essentially, we're here, really and truly, we should be here for dawah, right? Yeah, officially, um, that officially. argument has been forgotten, in it. That yeah, <laughs> and even if, but even as even if I was a revert, British yeah. Muslim, like you know, English, you know, family is English and all of that, and I've decided to become Muslim. Mm. That's like that's the the that's the um, sort of. Uh, what's the word like storyboard i like to picture myself in mm. because i think we're very quick to as you know as people with with our or north african heritage or you know muslim families that have come from abroad it's very easy for us to say oh yeah why am i even here i should go yeah you know i shouldn't be here or because you always feel you always felt like an outsider a bit anyway mm-hmm. and it's easy to fall back on that but for someone that isn't yeah, someone that was born here, everything's here, all of their history is here, and suddenly mm. they become Muslim. Mm. What what's going through their mind? Like, oh, mm. do I not vote anymore? Okay, but what do I? What is the future of these people here? Yes, it's easy for me to abandon these people here mm. because these people here don't mean anything to me in that sense. They're mm. not like my Muslim brothers and sisters. You know, yes, they are potential dawah candidates. I know it sounds really horrible, <laughs> but yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But they are essentially the non Muslims and if if it's getting harsh for me to practice my religion here, then mm. I should just leave. 
Mm. Right. Mm. But then one who's more inclined to, you know, that have a history here, or it could even be someone like me, but sees a future of Islam here. Yes. Right. Then that's what one could say. Mm. Oh, well, we need to make this place more, uh, yeah. uh, you know, better for Muslims. But what is the long term? The yeah. long term. The long term isn't thought about that much. I feel like the long term for a lot of people is we want to live here, and, and that's about it. We want to live here, and this is going to be controversial, but we want to live here, and mm. we want to continue living under people that uh, continue un- living under non-Muslims. Mm-hmm. We'll get a change for that which suits us, but we want to, we want to continue living under non-Muslims. Mm. Like no matter where you are, no matter where you are, whether it's Europe, America, uh, the UAE, North Africa, wherever. You would want, as a Muslim, ideally, to live under Muslim rule, under Muslim mm-hmm. laws, under whatever. Yes. That's, that's, that should be the bread and butter of yeah. what we desire for ourselves yeah. and our families, right? Mm. And you so, should believe in your bones that that is actually the best thing exactly. for everyone as well. Yeah, Exactly. Mm. But by voting and being part of the political system here, is that what your end goal is? Mm. This is what I've always wondered. I've always wondered, like, can you realistically say to yourself that even if it was to take like thousands of years would you want uh, you know people are going to take this the wrong way but I'll say it how it is would you want England the UK to be a Muslim country like mm. would you want that for the Muslim people because if you come to if you're coming with the vision that Islam is a liberation and yes. the cure for all the elements of the society yeah right this is the solution to every to the world's problems mm. do you want Islam for this country do you mm. want Islam to grace this country yeah. Right? Or yeah. Or do you want to live amongst non-Muslims, ruled by non-Muslims, ruled by man-made laws, and Forever. it's just that it's just that the non-Muslims like you. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's I, I more of I'm, a dunya kind of outcome, isn't it? Yeah, and, and this is what yeah. I feel. And, and, and you know, forgive me if I'm wrong, and forgive me if people say that. Oh, you haven't thought about. You know, I want to know. I want to. Obviously, I'm not part of the. Yeah. I've clearly positioned myself yeah. into a, uh, the side that maybe is better off not voting but for those that do and mm. strongly feel about it is that their long term goal mm. because if it's, that's not your long term goal then what is the point mm. that's my argument what mm. is the point of you moving some chess pieces on the on the on the chessboard if mm. all the chess pieces are non muslim and they're always going to be that way and you know what i mean the board itself is always going to be non mm. unidamic unless your thought process is yeah i'll do this but inshallah one day mm. through steps Mm. This world, this country can be graced with, with, mm. with. Um, do you understand? It, mm. remi- it, it kind of feel. This is how I feel about it. Like, imagine you know the the, the muhajirin that went to um, to uh, Ethiopia mm-hmm. in, during the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Mm. But imagine if democracy lived there and then. Yeah. Right? So they've gone there. Suddenly, whilst they're there, hypothetically speaking, they're going to ch- decide new leadership. Mm. Would the Sahaba at that time mm. got involved in those leadership sort of, you know, through democracy? Would they have done that? Mm. They may have engaged with them in mm. da'wah and conversation because they want Islam for these people, mm. which is what they did. They spoke to the king, and they gave the king da'wah and they told the king about Islam. Yeah. Right? But their vision wasn't, "I'm going to live here under the king forever." That's not what they wanted. Yeah, it they was wanted, temporary. It was out of necessity. Yeah, it was out of necessity, yeah. and they also, wanted the, they wanted the king to yeah. become Muslim. They wanted the yeah. people to be Muslim. Mm. Yeah, um, and and actually, they didn't go there. They didn't go there as you could say lowly people, and yeah. they didn't go there um, like to to get like a job or whatever. Mm. Like what I mean is that they went there under a pact. Yeah, yeah. as far as I know, they went yeah. there because the king agreed that I know you guys are Muslims. I know what you believe in. And I'm willing to protect you here in my place. Yeah. And it, the, the difference between that and the, the, you know, the modern context is that it was like, okay, these Muslims are going to come to the UK. Maybe mm. we don't even know too much about what they believe. We don't know the man, what the manifestation of these people's beliefs actually looks like. But it's like, oh, we need cheap labor. It's like asylum seekers. Yeah. So it's a completely know. different thing. Like okay fine i guess we'll let you in because we colonize your country and we need cheap labor versus yeah. like okay i know what you guys are about and i'm willing to protect you here in my country yeah. like, it's different isn't it 
and and this is it. I think mm. you know. And forgive me if I'm wrong or generalizing, mm. but I want, I do want to know if this is what people mm. does. It cross people's minds what mm. I've just said. The people that do engage in voting and stuff. Mm. If your end goal is one day, I want, I would love, you know, genuinely and sincerely, I want to be ruled by Muslims. I want to be ruled by Muslims. And and if I was to stay here, I would love Islam to flourish and grace and bless these people. Yeah. Right. And 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 I I must emphasize that because. People who aren't, you know, too familiar with Islam or maybe listening to this out of the blue, they're going to think that we're just talking about takeovers. No, we're talking about a mercy and a charity to the people. We're mm. talking about this will liberate the, the hearts and minds of people. It would, yeah. it will, it will um, fix mm. the societal problems that are everywhere. Mm. Do you understand? Like whether surely... it's homelessness or drug abuse or whatever. Like yeah. this is what we believe. This is what we believe. We talk about the mm. true implementation. It's the best the thing. Yeah, it's the best yeah. thing you could have. Yeah. So, do is that what we want mm. Mm. in terms of? legislatively mm. not just in practice oh mm. i'm going to give more charity and people are mm. going to start we talk about legislatively because that has been forgotten everywhere and the bottom line is Akhi, mm. whether it's the uk mm. america mm. algeria tunisia mm. morocco wherever on paper they're all being ruled by democracy but why is mm. it in algeria and tunisia where we're from mm. we say oh we would love the sharia to be here mm-hmm. right but why, why why can't we say that here? They're, be, they're both being ruled by you know hypothetically the same sort of system, mm. whether that's implemented the same way or not. But on paper, they're both meant to be democratic sort of governments, mm. right? Well, so, I don't know though because it is slightly different. Because in Algeria, for example, many of the r- laws are based, or maybe all the laws don't go against the Sharia. Mm. Although it, maybe would, that's what, not what true. Argue, actually. Yeah. Okay, maybe I don't know too much about Algeria. Mm. In all honesty, I was using that as an example. Yeah, but. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, a lot of Muslim countries, yeah. not even hypothetical, a lot of Muslim mm. countries, are yeah. on paper, they say they're, 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 they're democratic, right? They're, yeah, but they may be you could argue, or, and I, this is not my argument, because yeah, I, go for I, it. I don't really, you could argue that just because you say you're a democracy, it doesn't mean your laws are against Sharia. You could have full Sharia laws, mm. and mm. laws, that, you could be like, look, I... I'm coming here, uh, let, whoever the, the leader, the ruler of the country is, yeah? They'd be like, yeah. look, Every single law must be in line with the Sharia. Yeah. Yeah. But on top of, but but as well as that, I'm going to uh, set it up as a democracy. Sort of. Or yeah, you could you could apply the same thing to monarchies. So there's monarchies yeah. that exist now. So you could that, say that it's like constitutional monarchy, maybe. Yeah. yeah where it's yeah, like yeah. whoever rules this country, like whoever can anyone can rule it. We're going to pick them by voting, whatever. But they are limited by the Sharia. They're not allowed to set any rules, do anything which is against this constitution, which is the Sharia, right? And this is a long discussion anyway. I don't feel course, really full, course, fully qualified to get into it, but it's an interesting um, angle uh, because yeah. I think maybe a, a lot of what me and you have come up thinking is that democracy is kind of the opposite of Sharia, but. I mean, there are people who argue that it doesn't necessarily have to clash. Mm. Um, I'm p- not on a, in a religious sense, but in a practical sense, I don't feel like democracy is a good way of ruling because um, if we give everyone equal vote, well, people's opinions aren't equally good, are they? Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. prefer a kind of thing where it's like the most, the smartest, um, smartest, but also concerned for the for the state of the people. Those mm. people have a say. So I guess that's like a parliament, yeah. but like a legit parliament. Um, I I, yeah. I come from the angle, and, and you know, this isn't mm. to come from the holier than thou angle whatsoever. Mm. And I think some people do get offended when this argument is put out there. Mm. But just this is just my sincere opinion. Is like mm. it's the same way when we pray istikhara and we go and do something. Like mm. I strongly believe that it's so murky for me mm-hmm. and so messy for me that. All I can think about is trying to be the best Muslim I can be, mm. being the best I can be to those around me, mm. and making dua to Allah to rectify situations and make situations better. Yeah. And I have full faith and conviction that if we're sincere, mm. and the key is sincerity, mm-hmm. if we're sincere mm. and we do what we believe is right, mm. then Allah will rectify the situation around us. Because that's mm. the most simple sort of um, simple sort of uh, sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa taala that we, we're taught. Is that you rectify yourself, and that then people will be rectified. Yeah. Like you change yeah. yourself, and think, mm. and that that's all I can. When it comes to things like this, this is all I can think about because my one action mm-hmm. doesn't change myself. Like me voting, mm. 
you know, me going there and risking things doesn't mm. do much for myself in terms of my dean or my spirituality or improve me in any way. Yeah. Okay? But me going and increasing my knowledge or increasing my abed or fasting mm. or whatever it could be, mm. right, or increasing charity, etc., that changes me for the better. And that should, based on Allah's promise, change mm. the people for the better. And that's more guaranteed for mm. me. But that's I don't know, bro. I don't know if that's the... But it's not about. It's not I don't about know that. if that's the way saying, of. Yeah, I'm saying that that leads to things that are beyond what we would even imagine in terms of. Yeah. You know, of guidance. But I think because you're you're saying that good actions are only the listed ibadat. No, 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 no. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to limit it to that. I'm okay. just an example. But I'm saying because you could argue, for example, ch- that let's say it could go either way. So by voting. Yep. You could be doing your duty of Nehian al Munkar, for example. Yeah. Mm. Or by not voting, abstaining from voting because you believe it's wrong, you could be avoiding, following the hadith of avoiding the, the doubtful matters. But do you know what? And here's another thing. This yeah. is a counter to that. Mm. Although you're Tenhi al Munkar in one aspect, yeah. there are other aspects, no matter who you vote for, yeah. you're increasing the Munkar in. Because this is what the argument was. Yeah, that's, that's are, an argument. But what, I'm, I'm saying either way, whatever you do, yeah. As long as so so voting to, to with the intention of Nahyan and Munkar will will yeah. that not is that not a good deed? It is, but it it, yeah. it cancels itself out. Yeah, but with, wait, I, I forget the outcome, right? I'm oh, just right. talking about intention here. Yeah, yeah. yeah if yeah. you do if yeah, you do Nahyan and Munkar, this you, is what I was saying. If yeah. you're sincere, and this yeah. is what what goes back to. What but I that's what I'm saying, bro. Is that doing a good deed increases your iman, which yeah. rectifies your state. Right. No matter which way you go, as long as you're I, doing good deeds and your intention is good and you're sincere, yeah. and, and this is, I, that is I rectifying just, your state. I'm just not convinced about the intention. This yeah, is that's I fine. That's fine. Earlier, I think yeah. earlier I was trying to narrow down, saying mm. that if you sincerely have mm. the same long-term vision that mm. all Muslims should have with regards mm. to how they should be, um, how they should live, yeah. right, then. And this is why I said that there's two opinions, and I think both have their valid arguments. If mm. you sincerely believe that doing that and voting, mm. etc., is the right way forward, mm. and your end goal is the same as mine in mm. terms of wanting, to, then you do you. Yeah. You know, and honestly, because I, I believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to judge you based on your sincere belief. Mm. Right. Mm. Me, my sincere belief isn't there, that, that yeah. but I, but I have full faith and conviction that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is is um, uh, what's the word? Is just. Yeah. So, do you understand? But when, yeah. but but the, the 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 bottom line is, and the reality is, and if we we're trying to input some realism into this into this argument, is that yeah, no, it's never going to be the case where a hundred percent of Muslims living in the West will vote, mm. right? So there's always going to be two camps, no matter how you know, till the end of time. Mm. I believe that there's always going to be two camps, mm. and I'm just going to have to be part of the camp that doesn't at this stage, unless obviously mm. I'm. I, Opinion changes, yeah. But to, and I think this is what I don't like about either side is like, yes, present your arguments, yeah, right. Um, but try like di- excommunicating people because they've clearly come to a conclusion based on evidence yeah. or based on That's logical up. opinion or yeah. whatever. It's just a bit silly. Mm. Yeah, you know? this is. I mean, this is a matter. Clearly, it's a matter of ishtihad because you have scholars on either side, each bringing evidence this and that, mm. and you know we know the principle is. Uh, you can't do inkar. You can't. Um, what's the, what's inkar in English? Um, Excommunicate or no, no. You can't condemn. You can't oh, yeah, condemn right. when there's a difference of opinion. You can't condemn the other people following the other opinion. Yeah. As long as it's obviously valid difference of opinion, you can't say you guys are doing X, Y, Z because they're following proof still, and it's a yeah. matter of it's not like they're going against something which there's ijma or anything like that. So, so yeah, but um, just going back to this point of rectifying yourself, that's what I think we need to look at it in a broader way, right? So, mm. some ways of rectifying yourself is saying a hundred istighfar a day. Of yeah? course. One, another way is, is fasting. Another way is holding your tongue when you're frustrated with your parents. Yeah. But equally, a way of rectifying yourself is when you're in a business meeting and they're trying to push you on the terms of the contract and you're, yeah. you're and you decide to be a bit generous and you give it you give it let it go their way yeah this is yeah. equally rectified because this is this is 
following principles from the Sunnah, yani of, for mm-hmm. example, generosity, for example, uh, Allah uh, shades uh, seven. Uh, no, it's not one of the seven, but um, I think, uh, what's the hadith, man? It's about the man who is easygoing when buying and selling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's a great reward for him. I don't think it's one of the seven under the shade of Allah, right? Um, you know, so that's a way of rectifying yourself. Um, yeah. So the, it's it's much broader than just uh, what I, I think Sheikh Haytham said it very well, where he said there's listed ibadat. Yani there are things that Allah says to do clearly, like in the Quran or in the of Sunnah, course. and then there is the application of broader principles in life as you're going through life. So yeah. listed. Ibadat or acts of worship is not the only way to rectify, you know, and I think we need to look at it in a very broad way, you know. Mm. No, so of course, it's, it's, and, it, and a lot uh, of it is ba- based on intentions. That's why our actions are just yeah, yeah. Intentions. And a lot of the time as well, like we, like you were saying, it's like you might um, start making, uh, let's say, uh, movies. Yeah, like I, mm. uh, I think I listened to an interview with Buna Muhammad, okay. you know, the, the poet, and he's getting into making movies and stuff. And, you know, he really believes this is very important and it's it's good in all ways, whether it's for Muslims to give them reminders or, I don't know, um, alternative entertainment or whatever. Right. Um, and some people might look down on that because it's not something listed in the Quran. Right. But like you said, like based on his mighty intention and his personal belief that it will have a really big impact, positive impact, yeah. then like. He's doing him, right? Like me and you might not be convinced that that's a good way of investing money and time. Yeah. But he does, right? So, you know what I mean? Um, there's, there's, this is an area where because it's not written black and white in the Quran, we might have different views on if it's actually useful, mm. you know, you know, uh, useful uh, investment of time or money or whatever. But it's, it's that's why it's like, opt- it's like me and you, we're doing this podcast. Like I'm sure people think, the podcast might be a waste of time and stuff. So it's, it's a lot of different uh, uh, views on well, stuff. they won't know it's a waste of time unless they're wasting time listening to it, bro. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? Good for you, good for you. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm not trying to belittle sins or, uh, you know, all sins should be avoided. But I think with this, like, I think obviously the term shirk gets thrown around and, and mm. what if this could be that and mm. those things scare me man <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. why like a lot of people don't want to risk it man yeah yeah um, but the thing is th- this is what I think yeah so th- I guess my problem in the whole discussion is I, I'm literally blanking on why it's why it's haram like I I, get, I understand the general point of getting involved in um, uh, a system that um, allows uh, people to make laws that oppose Allah's law. I understand that general point, but I just don't understand how by voting I'm actually getting involved in that. But anyway, so, right? Should I, should I just yeah. briefly, here's one. Okay. It's, it says in Al-Mawsu' Al-Mawsu'at Al-Adiyan mm-hmm. Al-Madahib Al-Muasira mm. It's written in, in English characters, which is why it's confusing me. Mm. But it says, undoubtedly, the democratic system is one of the modern forms of shirk in terms of obedience and following or or legislation, as it Mm -hmm. denies the sovereignty of the creator and his absolute right to issue laws and ascribe that right to human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, interpretation of the meaning, you do not worship besides him, but only names which you have forged, you and your fathers, for which Allah has sent down no authority. The command Mm -hmm. of the judgment is for none but Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but him. Mm -hmm. That is the true straight religion, but Mm -hmm. most men know not. Mm. Um, uh, let me just read a little bit more in terms of excerpts. Oh wait, there's a detailed. Um, <coughs> democracy is a system that is contrary to Islam because it gives the power of a legislation to the people or to those who represent them, such mm. as members of parliament. Instead of to based, Allah, yeah. Yeah, based on that, in democracy, legislative authority is given to someone other than Allah. May He be exalted. Rather, it is given to the people and their deputies. And what matters is not their consensus, but the majority. Mm. That's what the majority agree upon becomes laws that are binding on nation. Yeah. Even if it's contrary to common sense, religious teachings, or reason. Mm. In these systems, legislation has been promulgated allowing abortion same-sex marriage and usurious interest yeah the rulings of sharia have been abolished and fornication adultery and the drinking of alcohol permitted in fact this system is at war with islam and its followers mm. um and obviously it goes on and on and on yeah. and, and all you need to do is to google yeah 
voting slash haram or yeah yeah you know, and there's other yeah. stuff is it permissible yeah. to vote for mm. Pe- care for the two seem to be less evil um, mm. a lot of these are on islam q a for example and there's mm. other sites that are available mm. um, but you know whether you take whatever opinion yeah even to to to, to read that it's like whoa mm. like, do I, is it worth the risk <laughs> you mm. know um and that's you know that's sort of like where i'm at but mm. there's a lot of things like I'm trying to think of something that may seem like I, I'm trying to think of a situation where I've faced a fatwa like that and I've chosen the opposite. Yeah. Like the, not not chosen the opposite on purpose. I mean, like there's two different opinions. Yes. One of them is saying it's just so bad. Look how bad yeah. it is. And you've gone and with like the more risky one. Yeah. yeah. And I can't think yeah. of anything mm. like that. Yeah, that's um, that's true. And that that's a difficult place to go with the more risky one. Mm. Because I guess like I, the Prophet I, said, yeah. you know, in regards to the grey areas of the religion yeah avoid them, to yeah. avoid them yeah yeah you know? that, that's yeah that's that's the principle to follow and that's when these things come up where it's like grey area you've got the the overarching principle from the Prophet yeah. like a key a key hadith um, I guess it all comes you know, down to the obligation it, bro it all comes yeah. down to obligate for me at least mm. that's my ultimate saying like as long as I know that I'm not obligated to vote mm. and then I don't think I will Mm. Because I could, I could, and one could say, "Oh, you're going to suffer the consequences, etc." Maybe I will. Mm. But I'll die knowing that I didn't do anything that. Mm. Do you understand? Like I yeah. could be questioned about. But, yeah, I guess as opposed to dying with that on my mm. shoulders and being mm. like, "Oh, what if I am questioned mm. about it?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, you see, like, like I literally just mentioned the hadith about avoiding gray gray areas. Yeah, yeah. Doubt, doubtful matters, right? The thing is, just from my personal understanding, it's actually not even a grey area, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. because what you read in terms of obviously we haven't like done deep research. Thing, right? yeah, yeah, we haven't done that. The thing is, what what you read, I I can fully see that it makes hundred percent sense. Like, obviously, who am I to argue with it? It just yeah. seems like it's being applied to the decision between man-made laws and laws of Allah. Yeah, and that you can say it's clear cut. Uh, if you pick m- man-made laws over Allah's laws, that's that's clear now, very clear. Yeah. No, no doubt there, no doubt there. But we're talking about a situation where you're either going to live in the system ruled by these laws and not vote, or you're going to be living in the system ruled by the laws and vote. You get it. So that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, this yeah, is a bit. Uh, I'm I'm open, bro. I mean, I'm sitting here. Uh, pretty much leaning a bit towards the side of voting, but yet yeah, I'm not voting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. maybe that's but, showing how uh, much of a loser I am. That might be different if you were in the UK. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be, I think if I was in the UK, big, it'd be different. Yeah, you'd have to make a big trip. Yeah, uh, whilst otherwise you mm. could just walk down but, the road. You know, within the within the camp of you should vote, there is the discussion, and I think it's a valid discussion of the effectiveness of voting. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a that's a, a whole discussion in and of itself. Like. Okay, hypothetically, if there was to be positive impact from voting, that's one thing. But it's it, it's actually a discussion itself of is it impactful? Is it positive? You know, so that's a, that's a whole thing as well. Yeah. And that's again where different opinions are going to come out of it. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, I mean, yeah. there's a, there's one thing I, I didn't even touch on is that you are voting essentially for two people that aren't Muslim. And mm-hmm. they're not going to have Islam as their primary agenda. So mm-hmm. yeah, one one side of the argument is well, you're voting for the lesser of two evils. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but then the other side is like, well, um, for every for every evil that you vote against, mm-hmm. there's something good that is getting lost, you know. Or so, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like for every, Could be, yeah. it goes back to the left wing, what, left mm-hmm. wing, right wing argument again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know. I think, yes, bro, if you're we interested, can practice yeah. our religion mm. freely, but then there's also way more things that we don't want. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, bro, if you're interested, I can explain a point that I found quite convincing from Islam 21C, yeah? Go on, then. So they were basically saying that the, the whole concept of voting and why they're pushing people to vote is nothing to do with the agenda of the candidates or the, the parties. Yeah, okay. they're like, oh, one day Labour says this, we love Muslims. One day Conservatives love Muslims, whatever. Yeah, they're like that. Literally, doesn't matter. Yeah, they're like the whole thing is that you vote, and bit by bit, as more Muslims vote, all of the parties 
start seeing the numbers of Muslims voting and they're like, oh, this is actually a, a sizable part of the population right. who can actually swing the vote in our favor in certain uh, constituencies. OK, oh. so now they start thinking, huh, like well, literally we don't care about Muslims. We might even hate Muslims. Right. But these guys can win us the vote in these key cities or whatever. So maybe we need to start appeasing them a bit. And you can right. see how if you if you if Muslims voted over 50 years, 30 years, whatever, and they start to become get the reputation of, OK, Muslims vote. Right. Then you start to you start to get the politicians to start thinking, look, like we don't even like these Muslims. They're so annoying, this and that. <laughs> but the truth is they can win us the election. So maybe we should when we're stuck with this decision of shutting down, prevent or like giving it more budget. We're like, huh, do we want yeah. to win the election or not? So that's like the argument. They're like, look, it doesn't matter which party that, that what matters is developing the reputation that Muslims vote. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was quite interesting. That's. That's actually next level long term thinking. Um, of course, you could argue that that will never happen or whatever, but it's interesting. Mm. Annie. Mm. Mm. And Ooh, to, to round it all off, go on. <laughs> no, no, I just, um, you know, obviously we discussed the, this whole, the, 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 like I started the discussion about looking at the forest before looking at the branches and the leaves, right? Yeah. And so, regardless of if you're comfortable voting, you're not comfortable, whatever there is the duty upon everyone to make the positive changes outside of the political arena as well yeah. you know so there is the social aspect there is your dawah there is your day-to-day -day co conduct yeah. there is developing you know raising your kids you know on the, the right way raising your kids to be yeah. great people that's, that's, um that's excelling at work that's a harder thing to do and i think that's what we yeah. neglect and mm. you know what if we had this much zeal about you know the, the voting argument mm, as we did cleaning your neighbors uh, you know yeah, the drive like or whatever and I know it sounds really cliche it is really really cliche but it's often mm. forgotten and that's what has the lasting impact mm. yeah yeah you know, because essentially you're putting your putting your deed on a piece of paper and then forgetting about it and letting someone else take up that change um but i don't know i just think mm. you know ground up instead of top down yeah. always and i think um, another aspect as well so you know a lot of people they talk about the political side they talk about the day-to-day -day action side but something uh, maybe not talked about so much and maybe because it's not uh, available to most of the population is the you know let's be real the power that business and industry exactly. has i was gonna i was gonna say that to you over earlier. politics yeah when you said about you know um Muslim, when he said Islam one, uh, 21 sees um, mm. argument about Muslims should vote more because that shows that they can be swayed or whatever mm. you know like that I was thinking actually it's it's kind of like the communities that have already existed for thousands of years who have done business with each other and been honest with each other mm. and bought from each other and kept that money within their own communities mm. to the point where they have you know, they you know, money talks, baby. You mm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's power politics there. Yeah, yeah. Like, My friend real. was telling me a real, real life case study, okay, of how how business will affect politics. Okay. Yeah. So in the U.S., um, yeah, there's quite a big, quite a few arms manufacturers from the yeah. U.S. Right. We got um, uh, Smith and Wesson. We've got uh, what's it called, Lockheed Martin. All of these evil yep. people. Yeah. So, um, have you ever shot a gun, by the way? Oh, possibly. Do you know what brand country. it was? No, right. I was too young to remember. Okay, but yeah, go on. <laughs> okay, so um, so these are huge companies, you know, you know, billion dollar contracts. Um, and I think it's Congress or some kind of, you know, government entity. They have to approve all contracts and all like weapons programs and stuff, right? Yeah. So, um, what these companies do is, they go to every single senator let's say it's a senator because i don't know the de details of american politics yeah they go to every yeah. senator and they say look if you let this bill go through and you approve this contract we're going to give your state 500 jobs yeah yeah and sorry I'm sorry. yeah and then they go to every senator and they say we're going to give your state 500 jobs your state 500 jobs the people are going to love you in the state you're producing producing oh, jobs wow. this and that yeah, yeah? So it's literally the closest you can get to bribing without actually bribing. Yeah, yeah? yeah, of course. Like, okay, so now when it comes to the vote on should we approve this contract, what do you think they're all going to do? 
they're yeah, all going to approve it. They'll be like, look, I'm going to approve it. My people are going to love love me for creating jobs. Great. Let, let's go. Why are we even voting on this thing? Let's go. <laughs> go for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is the power. And I think, um, again, thinking long term, you know, this is a big leverage point. You know, business, money talks, this and that. Oh, always, bro. And this is it. Like, that is what we should be really, like, going in terms of the dunya aspect we should be doing that mm -hmm. our fullest with with islam in mind because mm -hmm. once you put the power to the people like we're already looking after like look at the national Zakat care foundation look at things like that like we're already looking after our own to a certain extent with charity and mm -hmm. you know trying to implement some of that circle of life kind of thing mm -hmm. right where and i'm sure this this thing's coming up now about like university fees so how are we going to get around the issue of university fees for those that don't want mm -hmm. to take loans out okay well there's people coming together putting in money together right to benefit the muslims that don't want to take fees out those muslims that take part in these initiatives like they they're recipients of these initiatives um i can't remember what the term is but it's like um it's almost like crowdfunding for people to go yes. to uni right those people that do take that are recipients of that initiative feel some sort of obligation to then perform better at uni because they've mm. literally been paid for by someone from that from that person's pocket yeah. instead of getting this sort of mm -hmm. do you understand like they work harder because they feel accountable so they go and push more in and then it's a, it's a circle yeah. Yeah. you know like bottom line is bro if like we've got a choice of whether we should go and shop at a muslim person's store or not a muslim person's mm. store providing that the muslim person is selling decent quality items and is an honest individual and do you understand what i'm trying to say like, yeah 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 you can't yeah that's a, that's a no-brainer bro yeah it's you can't reward subpar performance and i think that's where we're lacking like we f we take things for granted we mm. take muslim uh business for granted like if you've ever worked in any sort of field uh something tiny like freelancing or whatever like mm. and you 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 want to you've got a muslim client and they just take the mick mm -hmm. <laughs> like and everything's like inshallah uh, yeah you know i'll pay you th this time pay you that time like little things bro, like, <laughs> real life story bro yeah i'm, I'm like, still waiting 12 months later <laughs> this is I'm, it i'm like, not joking yeah go go vote but like don't pay just don't try to say like yeah there's priorities bro this is where this is what happens but it's long term man it's mm. long term yeah and yeah. this you know we, we can't be ignorant to communities that have done it and succeeded in doing that and looking after each other financially yeah, you yeah. Know? and i think even more powerful is when you take something like the idea of um s supporting people with the loans thing and you yeah extend that service if you like to beyond just muslims yeah okay yeah, yeah. assuming you're in a, you're in a non-muslim country so it's like we've gone from this idea of yeah yeah we're hooking up muslims to we believe riba destroys societies so yeah. come and get your loans from us no interest you know yeah so Definitely. that that's I even better when it goes what, that size what, there needs to be a drive and i think we're getting we're seeing that now anyway like the, the starting points maybe mm. a drive for and this is not undermining the charity that goes on now mm. there's brilliant charity work that's worldwide for destitute and poor muslims that are going through war-torn situations like mm. extreme hunger extreme extreme circumstances right mm. we go we, we we we've always been doing that work and we're always going to increase that work and that mm -hmm. should never be neglected mm. but we need to start also thinking about the reinvestment into our own whether it's you know students or whether it's our businesses or whatever yeah. investing in ourselves because what happens is the multiplication of the multiplication factor of investing in in our in our own communities in the west magnifies how much we can Im impact it positively the the mm. communities that we have yes. worldwide yeah yeah right yeah. because you could feed somebody in i don't know in war torn yemen mm. right and that would just come from one but if you were to uh, impact, like multiply the, the impact that you have here, mm. then you've got hundreds, if not thousands of people feeding that person. Yeah, here. yeah. the people that you employ or the people that you help grow businesses or whatever. Yeah, it multiplies yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? This is it. Like mm. it's, 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 it's building more powerhouses that can then turn into what you are. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. were in that position of power yourself. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's um, like... It's like this Look one guy Silicon valley for example yeah. have you seen like yeah. you hear, it's a whole ecosystem I, I read i read certain books and stuff sometimes about these tech giants in silicon valley and stuff like that mm. and how like they all just seem to have known each other growing up and <laughs> same with, like politicians and stuff they went to the same schools and yeah. stuff like this you know yeah. um, and it, it should be that 
we should be raising each other up. Mm. But we're still lagging, bro. We're still lagging in some very... I'm, I'm mm. sure most of the world is. But it, we should be the forefront. Based on what we have in terms of morals, ethics, code of conduct, everything that we've got that our deen teaches us, we should mm. be in the forefront of all of these... You mm. know, If one Muslim was to make it something big, mm. we should all be there with him because that's how our deen teaches. Mm. Not sharing your wealth, like, oh, you have an obligation to give all your money away. Mm. No, it's about teaching those skills and giving back to the communities, you know, mm. and investing in, 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 in your fellow Muslims. But we just need to be worthy of it and we need to implement those characteristics. Yeah, yeah. I think whatever you do out of all these things we mentioned the the bedrock of it is kind of i guess your personal mindset or discipline you know disciplining yourself yeah. to do the right thing or to do not just the right thing but the better thing you know what you're saying? Yeah. so you can't well literally if you can't if you can't fast once a week for example you <laughs> might you might struggle to make another very hard decision because all discipline builds on each other on itself yeah you know so the discipline to restrain from eating helps you uh discipline yourself when making like business decisions or whatever it is you know yeah it it all builds on each other um let's look at some questions bro i don't know if i've got time bro oh i thought it was like one of those like freshly grounded ones where it's like a late (laughs) night i wanted to I'll be honest. My son's very poorly, and oh, um, my wife speak. just texts me, and he's he's done a bit of um, he's thrown up a little bit in the other room, and mm. he's not he's calling. He's been call- he, you could probably hear him through the mic. He's been calling me all this episode. Oh. <laughs> my wife's trying to keep him busy. Mm. Um, so, as much as I really want to do questions, we always get into a deep discussion, bro, and then we never mm. have time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we have got some decent ones, and we'll, we'll we'll try next episode to do them. Yeah, as soon as we start. Inshallah, because sure. um, we jumped straight into this one. I feel bad, man, but mm. it's the reality, bro. These are the sacrifices we have to make. <laughs> Discipline. Discipline. <laughs> Handalilah, handalilah, bro. This has been a really good conversation, and maybe we need to just add this caveat that you know we are not we're not scholars. We don't pretend to be scholars on the internet. No, of course, of course. Um, any final decision you make about anything should be from someone of knowledge that you trust. You know, they're qualified. You know, yeah. they have some level of taqwa and all of that. And that's the way to go. We're just, exactly. I guess we, you know, I think the main benefit of this discussion is how it's kind of showing how you can have different opinions and it's because you think a different way. And, be, you know, it's, it's sick. It's amazing. I think I remember back in the day there was, a, I think, a, a, a mock debate um, on the niqab being mandatory or not, oh, and I they that, yeah. yeah they set it up just to show the etiquettes of debate, and so I yeah. love these things, man. I think it's really really good. Yeah, I think it's the first time we have probably op- like really clearly disagreed on something on it. I can't mm. really think of any other. Allahu example. Akbar. Yeah, but it's anyway. good because that's what I've always wanted. I've always been like, oh my god, we agree on so much. Let's just <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, okay, what topic will we disagree on? <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay. If you would like to um, make any comments on what we've said here, um, then go to mindheistpodcast.com. You can either email us or anonymously you can ask a question or make your comment. Um, You can also find us on Instagram from that same link. Um, And yeah, thanks for listening. Jazakum Allah khairan. And uh, yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Shadu wa na'inan ant. Astaghfiruka atubu alaikum.